Hi right, guys. It is a I don't know what you'd call it. It is a warm, sticky night. All of a sudden here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in paradise out in the point lonesome swamp outside of Inverness, Florida here <coughs> on this hot sticky and we had Wednesday night, February, I don't know, I'm losing track, 5th or 6th, 2020, somewhere in there. And uh, you have once again stumbled into Collapse Chronicles. And I am Sam Mitchell and the, my little sidekick, Sancho Panza, is fleeing from the mosquitoes in the back of this truck. Uh, so I'm going to do what I do every day here on Collapse Chronicles, and that is to bring you today's, or shall we say tonight's, Chronicle of the Collapse, because I am so busy uh, putting together my little bivouac to survive the collapse of global industrial civilization out here in Florida in 2020 that I don't even have time anymore to turn on my computer uh, to head over to the mainstream media uh, to see. Uh, and I'm telling you, uh, you know, it's getting to be a struggle. You know, to try to figure out which uh, one of many... I'm, I'm just going to go down some of the headlines that I did not decide to uh, develop here. Here is rapid permafrost collapse is underway disintegrating landscapes and our predictions. Yes, permafrost in Canada, Alaska, and Siberia is abruptly crumbling in ways that could release large stores of greenhouse gases more quickly than anticipated, researchers have warned. What is uh, on Bill McKibben's mind today? You know, I am very conflicted about Bill McKibben. We need to get Bill on the show. Uh, he is over there in Canada with this uh, article in The Guardian today. When it comes to climate hypocrisy... Canada's leaders have reached a new low, and uh, from Canada to right here in our own country, right uh, right around the time of the State of the Union address, oh yes, the Trump administration is cutting back protection for migratory birds. Imagine that. Let's see. How about ocean currents are speeding up faster than scientists predicted? Who would have thunk it? But, you know, I really like it when we actually find the word collapse in a mainstream media story. This article right now, sitting here on Yahoo News, is actually coming from the French news service. So what is on the minds of those Frenchy newsmen today while the rest of the planet is talking about coronavirus uh, as the biggest distraction, you know, the distraction of 2020, the coronavirus. Don't get me going. Uh, we have this little, between all of the 500 coronavirus stories, we have this little dispatch from the French News Service, which we will make today's Chronicle of the Collapse. Multiple eco-crises could trigger systemic collapse, warned scientists. There you go. Okay. Overlapping environmental crises could tip the planet into, quote, global systemic collapse. More than 200 top scientists 
worn today. Uh huh. Climate change, extreme weather events from hurricanes to heat waves, the decline of life sustaining ecosystems food security, and dwindling stores of fresh water, each, each and every one of these poses a monumental challenge to humanity in the 21st century. Out of 30 global scale risks, okay, I guess there were originally 30 global scale risks these five topped the list, both in terms of likelihood and impact, according to scientists surveyed by Future Earth. Future Earth, there's a contradiction in terms, an international research organization. Okay, let's look at this report from the future of our planet. In combination these five, not even, not even taking into consideration the other 25 that uh, future risk to the planet that are not even mentioned anywhere in this article, we're just looking at, the, at five of them. In combination, these five, quote, have the potential to impact and amplify one another in ways that might cascade to create global systemic collapse, close quote, a team led by Maria Ivanova, a professor at the Center of Governance and Sustainability at the University of Massachusetts, said in a 50-page report, we'll have to uh, call up Maria Sarah, could you get in touch with Maria and get her on the show? Okay. Extreme heat waves, for example, like uh, I think it was, I think we're heading to the mid 80s here in February tomorrow where I am. Uh, extreme heat waves, for example, speed global warming by releasing planet warming gases from natural sources even as they intensify water crises and food scarcity. Biodiversity loss, meanwhile, weakens the capacity of natural and agricultural systems to cope with climate extremes, also putting our food supplies at risk. Scientists, unlike 99.9% .9 of the people on the planet, scientists worry especially that rising temperatures could tip the planet's climate system into a self-perpetuating spiral of global warming. Well, guys, I hate to tell you, we're already in the middle of a spiral of self-perpetuating global warming. Anyway, as it is, <coughs> as it is, humans are struggling so far unsuccessfully <coughs> to cap both carbon dioxide and methane emissions, mostly from burning fossil fuels. Hmm. I never have thought that humanity is struggling so far unsuccessfully to cap CO2 and methane emissions from burning fossil fuels. Wow. If at the same time a warming Earth also begins to emit large amounts of these gases from, say, thawing permafrost, such efforts could be overwhelmed. Yes, what was that we were just saying? Rapid permafrost collapse is underway now, disintegrating landscapes and our predictions. Hmm, how about that? Okay. 
I'm not sure what efforts they're talking about. And this, all right, quoting the report, quoting this report from Future Earth, quote, Many scientists and policymakers are embedded in institutions that are used to thinking and acting on isolated risks one at a time. We call on the world's academics, business leaders, and policymakers to pay attention to these five global risks and ensure they are treated as interacting systems, close quote. Oh, yeah. I am sure the number one agenda uh, in the world's business leaders and policy makers, you know, even if they ignore 25 of the 30, I'm sure their number one thing to think about in 2020 is to uh, pay attention to these five global risks and ensure they are treated as interacting systems. Oh, yeah. Nearly 1,000 decision makers and top CEOs highlighted the same threats in a similar survey last month ahead of the World Economic Forum meeting in Davos, Switzerland. This is uh, Amy Lures, Executive Director of Future Earth. Quote, 2020 is a critical time to look at these issues. Our, ex our actions in the next decade will determine our collective future. Close quote. All right. But of course, we have the uh, United Nations meeting in China coming to the rescue. Yes, the UN meeting in China to talk about saving the planet. If I had to think of a more, uh, you know, guys, just if you lose your, your sick, twisted, dark, acerbic sense of humor uh, here from this point forward, uh, you're, you're in for a, a rougher ride than the rest of us. The United Nations meeting in uh, China in the year 2020 to figure out a way to save the planet is like, I don't know, Sancho Panza figuring out a way to save the chipmunks. Uh, <laughs> all you can do is laugh. All right. In October, the world's nations are set to gather for a major United Nations meeting in Kunming, China, to try to stanch the destruction of ecosystems and the decline of biodiversity. Oh, yes. Scientists do agree that the Earth is at the outset of a mass extinction event. No, uh, scientists agree, at least privately, that the Earth is in the middle of a mass extinction event. There is nothing outset about it. We are in the middle of it. Only the 6-1 in half a billion years, which could drive a million species, or one in eight, into oblivion over the coming decades or centuries. Let us rephrase this to which could drive every species on the planet, or eight in eight, into oblivion over the coming years or decades. You know, I, I what I try to do here on Collapse Chronicles is, is uh, guide people into how to read the mainstream media talking about doomsday. Uh, you, all, you really only have to change a few words in a sentence to, uh, to get some honest reporting, although the, the French news service is certainly more honest than anything you're going to find in this uh, 
in, in, in this country. Okay, the following month, okay, I guess this means in November of 2020, a critical, a critical UN climate summit in Glasgow, I guess that's in Scotland, will reveal whether the world's major economies are willing to ramp up carbon-cutting pledges that now fall far short of what is needed to keep our planet hospitable for our species. 2020 is also a critical year in ongoing negotiations over the high seas where a far west free-for-all, a far west free-for-all has led to overfishing and unrestrained resource extraction. Yes, and of course this is now going to include deep sea mining in the high seas. Some scientists have begun to look at the likelihood and impacts of these cascading environmental crises. And again, we're not even mentioning the other 25 on the list. Recent research has shown, for example, that some parts of the world may soon be coping with up to six extreme weather events at once, ranging from heat waves and wildfires to diluvian rains, I love that word, diluvian rains, and deadly storm surges. This is Eric Franklin, uh, a researcher at the University of Hawaii's Institute of Marine Biology. Okay, quote, Human society will be faced with the devastating combined impacts of multiple interacting climate hazards. They are happening now and will continue to get worse. Close quote. That is true, back to the French News Service, that is true, meaning they are happening now and will continue to get worse. That is true even in optimistic emissions reduction scenarios. If, for example, humanity does cap global warming at 2 degrees Celsius, yeah, right, above pre-industrial levels, which is an absolute joke, uh, New York City will likely face one major climate hazard every year on average by 2100. And if, don't forget the 2015 Paris Climate Treaty. Is anybody still quoting the 2015 Paris Climate Treaty calls for hold, holding that rise in temperature to well below 2 degrees C. If, however, carbon pollution continues unabated, the Big Apple could be hit by up to four such calamities at one time, including extreme rain, sea level rise, in, and storm surges, and in all such scenarios, tropical coastal areas suffer the most. And there you go. That was a pretty good state of the planet address for 2020. Um, uh, I guess Donald Trump never mentioned climate change in the middle of his State of the Union address last night while he was giving the Presidential Medal of Honor to Rush Limbaugh. And we wonder why the planet is collapsing. Uh, anyway, guys, if you like 
what, who was it, the future, future Earth. Is that the name of this group? We gotta get someone from future Earth on the, uh, future Earth. If you liked what future Earth had to tell you about your future and, of course, your children and grandchildren's future, uh, please take a few seconds to thumb up the today's Chronicle of the Collapse. If you did not appreciate what 200 scientists uh, had to tell you, uh, then take a few seconds to downvote Future Earth. And while you're over here, please uh, subscribe to Collapse Chronicles for more of this cheery news. And uh, meanwhile, get out there and enjoy this planet while you still can, is the bottom line. Bye, guys.